All right, so who here wants a life of purpose and meaning? All right, great. Who deserves a life of purpose and meaning? I do, I do. All right. So you want to know what it's going to take? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So give me that again. Yeah. Yes. All right. So this is, and this is what the existentialists tell us as well. These existentialists got right back in this conversation. They went away for a while, but now they're back. So the existentialists tell us that we have, so this is it. So if we really want this to happen, there is... A decision. <laughs> we have to make the choice. We have to decide. And what do I call this? The one decision. And that's what this means. We really have to make that choice of whether we're going to focus on meaning and engagement or addictive behavior. If we're going to focus on purpose and getting into our lives more fully or escaping from it. And it really is a bigger commitment. It doesn't mean we live that 100%, but just like Bob said, with purpose, how we keep, it kind of keeps directing us. Remember how you drew that kind of, you're off, you're off it, off it, off it, off it, but you use that one decision to orient toward. That there really is a choice we need to make about our lives because without a conscious choice, what happens? What's your default? Our unconscious. Numbing out your default. It's the default, without some reason to not. And that's where a life of purpose can actually help you. And by having this deeper commitment to the quality of your life, it helps you discover your purpose. So when we made the distinction, and Bob talked about it, what's the difference between purpose and one decision? Purpose is why, why and your one decision is how. how, and your goals are what. All right, can you get that kind of difference? So your one decision will lead you to your purpose, but your one decision is a commitment to a quality of life. And that can be worded in many different ways. It can be the things you talked about earlier. It could be a commitment to authenticity that Fred talked about, a commitment to connectedness, a commitment to being open-hearted. Those things you said that were the most meaningful, if you could have one word that was your theology, that could be your commitment. That could be your one decision that that's what you use to kind of guide you day by day by day, choice by choice by choice. So, and that's what the existentialists tell us is what we need to do is we existentialists are all about choice. And what do we have on the developmental model at each step? Choice. choice. And we're going to be working with this. So this decision we make, and I'm calling our one decision to the qual one decision is not a goal, it's a way of being, whether it's truth or consciousness or being present or life as an adventure, all those things you worked with in more life training. But that is this kind of how you go about life that will lead, you don't even have to figure out your purpose, you live your one decision, your purpose will, you'll, it, it'll be revealed to you. It'll just show up. You'll know it. You'll get it. And we're going to work with some skills tonight and also tomorrow that are going to help you understand how that, how that works. So that we have this desire is true for all of us. But what do we do with that desire? Do we numb it or do we pursue it in the appropriate way that leads to a sense of meaning and purpose? And every moment, so can we talk about the existentialists again? All right. You sure you didn't get that? wasn't very resounding. So the existentialists tell us that not only is there this bigger choice. Oh, let me give you some of that. Let me give you a little of that, and then I'll have you uh, tie it back to yourself. The existentialists say that we have this choice every single moment. Oh, shit. Isn't that, like, horrible? How many of you want to just, like, make a decision that would be it, and you never have to think about it again? Wouldn't that be excellent? Well, you can make that decision, but then you have to make it over and over and ever again in order for it to become part of your lifestyle to create this sense of purpose and meaning because this is an ongoing engagement. Remember they said it's about engaging, which means you're doing you're engaging in it. You're you're responding to what's there. So let me give you this a little bit. So they talk about an existential decision that I call the one decision, but an existential choice. Doesn't it make it sound like much more exalted now? So would you, would you tell someone next to you, I'm contemplating making an existential decision. Just try that on. I'm contemplating making an existential decision. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm contemplating it. The chance, the possibility of making this existential decision. Very good. All right. So come on back. So let me give you a little bit more how the existentialists look at this, this decision. 
so this, there's this, this is part of the existential philosophy, let me bring you back, is that we do have a choice to make about how we live our lives. And that it's a choice we need to make consciously about our essence and our existence. And that that choice exists in every moment. But let me give you some of the thinking behind that so you can feel how exalted some of the thinkers are. Oops, let me get you back. Okay. Do we have something going on, Becker? I need to know about you. <laughs> We're getting into a soft addiction because I saw these faces going... <laughs> <laughs> it's a popcorn smell. We're all our addiction. How many of you are just totally all you can think of now is popcorn? <laughs> I know it's amazing. And then the minute you think of popcorn, what else do you think of? What goes with it? Excellent. So pretend I'm the TV, okay? <laughs> I don't know. Put me in a box here. <laughs> but I don't. Want you. you know how you're in a soft addiction? The the pace and the rhythm of how you eat. <laughs> If, it, if you could do a drum beat to it, but usually the drum beat's like this. <laughs> but it has this real, you, you, I'll, you, just, you know you're in a soft addiction when there's a rhythmic, you're mesmerized. It's just like, how many of you recognize this look? I don't know if you're putting it in or taking it out. Take it out. No, I'm putting it in. All right. That is hilarious. I think we ordered that in order for us to make the point, don't you think? That's great. All right. So, all right. So, pretend I'm pretend I'm in the TV now. Uh, no, don't, because then you'll all like slump and you'll do that thing. All right. Shake it out a little. All right. I deserve a life that's filled with more than popcorn. <laughs> Try that. I deserve a life that's filled with more than popcorn. <laughs> all right. Good. <laughs> you can ha- you can have it all, just more than. Okay. So we're back to the existential philosophers. Okay. (laughs) Our friend Kierkegaard, remember Soren Kierkegaard? He talked, he he had this notion that life hinges on a single basic choice. One decision that I would call it to be a self or to flee from your selfhood. So your choice is, will I be myself, will I be a self, or will I flee from that into a world of pleasure, addiction, and escape? So we actually named it, will I choose to become myself, to be myself, or will I flee from my own self and numb myself? And he described that before I even came up with the term soft addictions. He described that. And, and he'd also talk about the escape, you know, will I choose to engage more fully in life and become myself, or will I escape into these addictive pleasures, and will I also escape from responsibility and commitment? Will I keep myself from that? And that's the choice that we have. He also has, um, I, there's a book by this, a kind of a meditative kind of book that he wrote, that which, which describes this as well. It's called, Purity of Heart is to Will One Thing. Because what he says in that is like just that holding that one thing, that one decision is that purity of heart, that that's what purifies us, is to keep that one thing in front of us. He also has a book named Either Slash Or. He's really like getting weight. You've got the choice. It's either or. It's not like both and. It's really either or. What will you choose? What will you choose? 